Meantime, we want to welcome in Bill Donahue, the president of the Catholic League, for his thoughts on that. And first, Bill, we'll just start with your overall thoughts on the passing of Justice Ginsburg. Well, she was a towering figure. There's no question about it. I knew about Justice Ginsburg uh, when I did my uh, PhD dissertation at New York University on the American Civil Liberties Union. And at that time in 1993, I notified uh, many people who are conservatives about some of the actions that she had taken. Uh, she wanted to lower the age of consent between adults and minors and legalize prostitution. I, I shipped this to a lot of people. And with the exception of Rush Limbaugh and Newman Events, no one wanted to touch it. Uh, I was told that we can do worse than this. I mean, look, she she was a, a great champion for her cause. Um, her, on her question of civil rights, though, it should be noted that in the when she was questioned in 1993, uh, she, uh, it was asked of her, well, why is it that you're such a strong uh, uh, proponent of affirmative action, yet you've never once in your life hired an African-American as one of your clerks. And she said, well, that's true, but if I'm nominated and I, and I, get, and I get appointed, uh, I will change my way. So uh, this kind of a mixed record there. Yeah, and I want to talk about her record, which was very clear in the fact that she was uh, very strongly pro-choice. And in fact, Congressman Doug Collins, who's running for Senate in Georgia, tweeted about this, saying, quote, RIP to the more than 30 million innocent babies that have been murdered during the decades that Ruth Bader Ginsburg defended pro-abortion laws. With real Donald Trump nominating a replacement that values human life, generations of unborn children have a chance to live. Of course, this was coming out after her death. Bill, your reaction to that? Well, people have to understand that the bishops have already said uh, that abortion is the preeminent issue in this election. And I have to say that most practicing Catholics would agree with that. Uh, yes, there are many different issues that every uh, Catholic and non-Catholic have to consider, but the life issue has to be number one. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was the champion of abortion rights when she was at the ACLU. She continued with that. Uh, she had every right to do so, and people have a right now to disagree with her and hope that you'll, we'll get some woman in there uh, who might be more respectful of the rights of the unborn. Uh, one of those who might be championing, uh, championing, uh, championing for those rights would be Judge Amy Coney Barrett, uh, who is on the president's shortlist of Supreme Court nominees. She's a Catholic and a mother of seven as well, and she was a finalist for Trump's second high court nomination, which ultimately went to Brett Kavanaugh, as we know. But during her confirmation hearing back in 2017, Senator Dianne Feinstein said this. Do you consider yourself an Orthodox Catholic? I am a Catholic, Senator DeDurvin. The dogma lives loudly within you. And that's of concern. Bill, your, your thoughts on that statement from Senator Feinstein? Right. I condemned it at the time, and I'll condemn it again. It comes very close to having a religious test. No one ever said about Ginsburg that you're a committed secularist. Uh, it, they're starting in already. Newsmax viewers need to know that just this morning, the Telegraph out of England is flagging that uh, Trump is considering a, quote, devout Catholic. That's a red flag. We know that uh, Yahoo is already attacking. We've got the Religion News Service coming out now, mentioning that she's a Catholic who uh, is very much like the other Catholic, Brett Kavanaugh. These are all red flags. It shouldn't matter whether you're a Catholic or, or Jewish or, or Muslim or, or whatever. If they want to ask about your values, they should. That's entirely legitimate. But this is a game that was played before, and if they want to play it again, if this woman were uh, to be nominated by President Trump, uh, the Catholic League and others will call attention to the rank anti-Catholic bigotry of Senator Feinstein and many others. You know, I want to talk to you about something that we've seen during the coronavirus shutdowns that have continued on in certain states still, and that's the limitations as to who can attend in-person, uh, in-building church services. And in fact, uh, over the weekend, I believe, thousands of Catholics marched through the streets of San Francisco, socially distanced, of course, they were wearing masks as well, but they were protesting these restrictions on attending church in California. Watch this. 
People are hurting because they cannot come to church, they cannot receive the sacraments, they cannot exercise their natural right, protected by the First Amendment, to worship without suffering punishment from our city. Why can people shop at Nordstrom at 25% capacity? But only one of you at a time is allowed to pray inside of this great cathedral, which is your cathedral. Is this equality? No, there is no reason for this new rule except the desire to put Catholics to put you at the back of the line. Of course, clearly a priest there pointing out the double standard and being able to shop in person, uh, spend money, but, you know, you can't attend church uh, in certain parts of this country at this point. Does that sound fair to you? Well, uh, hats off to Archbishop Corleone. He's one of the best bishops in the United States. He's the Archbishop, Archbishop of San Francisco for fighting back. You know, remember in Nevada, they said you could go to the casino, but you can't go to church. They did the same thing here where I am in New York. Uh, and Cuomo and de Blasio lost in federal court when they tried to put greater restrictions on churchgoers than they put on people who were protesting, many of them violently, here in New York City. Yeah, you can go to Costco, you can go to uh, Lowe's, you can go to Home Depot, but somehow you can't go to church. Uh, look, what, look what Cuomo did here in New York. He gave a waiver to the MTV uh, awards people saying you don't have to quarantine. You know, when the elites do this, we know what a sham it is, that they're playing politics, that they're invoking these restrictions on churchgoers because they have an animus against religious liberty. And that's really what's driving this. De Blasio said, you, you can't protest uh, in the streets for anything you feel like it, but if you want to protest against racial injustice, because he agrees with that agenda, you can do so. And, of course, you can do so violently. I live in New York, and I'm right here on 34th and 7th, across the street from Madison Square Garden and Penn Station. Everything is boarded up. It's, it's a mess in New York because of what's happened, and yet people can't go to church. Yeah. I uh, want to talk to you about this new poll that came out. President Trump has been gaining support among evangelicals and Catholics, but this new number from Fox News shows that the president out front by a wide margin. Of course, President Trump, 66 percent, Joe Biden, 28 percent with the evangelical support. What do you make of those numbers? Is that surprising to you? No, I mean, uh, Trump did very well with evangelicals and Catholics uh, in 16. He won 52 percent of the uh, Catholic vote and, and greater numbers amongst evangelicals. I think the thing that's really interesting is that if you look at Catholics, you've got to disaggregate between those who are practicing Catholics and those who are not. If you're not a practicing Catholic, your views are very similar to the non-church goers, the secularists. But if you're, if you're a church goer, uh, then you tend to put the life issues, as the bishops have correctly said, as number one. And that obviously tilts them more towards Trump. Joe Biden is a Catholic and, pro and uh, Trump is a, pro a Protestant. However, when it comes to religious liberty and when it comes to abortion, Joe Biden wants to repeal the Hyde Amendment, which he used to support, which deals with the federal funding of abortion. He wants the taxpayers to pay for someone's abortion, both at home and abroad. He wants to repeal the Helms Amendment, whereas uh, President Trump, of course, does believe in the rights of the unborn. So, so if you're a practicing Catholic or, for that matter, of any religion, and you, you make the uh, life issue uh, the preeminent one, as the bishops have said, uh, that would account for the strong support uh, going to Donald Trump. All right. Bill Donahue joining us live this morning. Bill, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Newsmax TV is now America's fastest growing cable news channel. We give you the real news you need. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, share it with your friends. Newsmax TV streams live on YouTube for free. Newsmax TV, real news for real people.